Hey guys, welcome back. I'm so excited. It's the first of my new series, Window Treatment Ninjas. And I'm gonna focus today on drapery. So I hope you have your notebooks because this is a big subject. Think of window treatments as installed decorative elements, literally just like kitchen cabinets or pendants or even, you know, a specialty selection of hardware. They need to function, they serve a purpose, and they need to communicate your design style. So when you're working on the type of window treatment that you want to select for a certain space, there are five main factors to consider. First one is the architectural style or feel of your home. Very important. If you live in something mid-century modern versus something farmhouse, those are two different approaches. Next, you definitely want to consider privacy and light control. Now that's going to vary obviously per space. Bedrooms are different than living rooms, that kind of thing. Third thing is, are there any special conditions that you may have dealing with your window, such as those pesky oh, baseboard heaters or radiators? Or perhaps you have an HOA condition where you have to be all uniform from the outside. Those are real and we have to consider those when we're looking at this as well. The fourth thing that you want to think about is kind of the type and shape of your windows. And there's so many kinds. There's bay windows, there's circular, there's sliding glass doors, there's nothing but a wall of glass. So there's lots of different solutions that go with these different conditions. And the last element that you want to consider is what type of treatment do you want to use? Now, there's basically five window treatments in the world that you want to consider. There's drapery, there's shades, there's roller shades, there's blinds, and there's shutters. Now, since drapery is the big kahuna, we're starting with that today. Now, my definition of drapery is fabric panels that hang on either side of a window or a door, and they can be pulled across to cover the space. Now, there's a subcategory of drapery, which is called fixed panels, and those are often used in conjunction with another type of treatment, like perhaps a Roman shade, but they are side panels, a lot of times in a pattern or something very decorative, and they're fixed. They don't move across, but they just act as a decorative element in the space. So the reason that drapery is so confusing is because literally there are oodles of choices to make. Details that you have to consider are things like do you want moving panels? Do you want fixed panels? Do you want cafe panels? Mmm. Another major consideration is types of fabrics that you're going to use for your drapery panels. There's everything from super lightweight to super heavyweight. So things like shears, semi-shears, and even semi-opaque can go into areas where you need maybe a little bit of privacy, you're not wor too worried about light blocking, and you definitely don't you know, need a blackout condition. Those can work great. Now, there's a second part to this selection, which is what kind of lining are you going to select for the fabric? So there's lots of choices there. If you need light blocking, say it's in a nursery or a bedroom, you're gonna really prefer to have heavily light blocking or even completely blackout lining. Then if you just need privacy, a privacy lining will usually do well for that. And there's even for my Canadian friends out there, thermal lining, which helps you use the window treatment as a thermal protection against the temperature changes outside. Now, another choice that you're going to be making with drapery is what kinds of hardware and Think about hardware kind of like the jewelry. And so the types of hardware that you select often line up 
with your design style. So if you're more traditional, say in your design statement, then you're going to have more ornate or specific hardware that shows a lot. If you're all the way on the contemporary side of things, your hardware might be something as invisible as a simple ripple fold track that's mounted in the ceiling and you don't see anything else. So there's lots of choices in between. Everything from like the simple plain rod that everybody recognizes as a drapery rod. You can also get those in what's called a double rod so that you can hang two types of drapery, a sheer and an over drapery. You can do something called a traverse rod, which actually is a mechanical element that helps if you have a long span of drapery because it saves on the wear and tear of the actual hardware itself. Then there's rings and hooks and how you attach the actual drapery to the rod. You can do all kinds of things with that. Gosh, I love these square ones or sometimes you wanna get a big old chunky wood hook or maybe a big black one to say in metal or sometimes you just want something invisible that just connects to the top of the rod and moves the drapery along in a very sort of sleek contemporary style. Then there's Pull batons, oh my gosh, if you have a big window, you're definitely gonna want this because you're not gonna be wanting to pull the drapery from the front end that will actually pull that out of line and out of shape eventually. Tiebacks, oh my God, talk about the earrings of the drapery world. Oh my God, there's everything from fabric tiebacks and hard metal tiebacks and rope and there's just all kinds of things. Everything you can imagine has been made into a drapery tieback. So, ooh, but there's another piece of jewelry, which is the finials on the rods. If your rods are showing, oh my gosh, you can get everything from crystal balls to just a plain end cap as well as the brackets that are there actually holding the rod up to the wall. So now your next choice is actually what type of construction detail you're going to have to make the drapery. And that really refers initially to what is your top style. Your top style can be anything as simple as a tab top, which is just a little lap of fabric that goes over the rod itself. You can have pleats and there's all kinds of things that you can do with pleats. You can have single pleats, you can have double pleats, you can have triple pleats, which really add a lot of fullness to the, to the drapery. You can have inverted or box pleats. Oh, I use this a lot because it's super tailored and kind of simple, but it does give a little bit of fullness. There's a grommet top. We've seen a lot of these lately used for contemporary spaces. They look great in farmhouse details and things like that. There's the ring with the tab, which again is incorporating the hardware. So that would be a rod top or a plain top. And then there's the pocket or the gathered top, which is really simple. You see that a lot on cafe curtains. Now let's talk about fullness, which is the next construction detail. Fullness really relates to the feel of the drapery. So if you think about draperies that are really traditional and they bell out at the bottom and they're very full and super lush. That's a high fullness level, probably 300%. Now, if you think of something more contemporary, like this ripple fold drapery that just stacks back into a narrow, slender stack at the side, that's gonna be a smaller, fullness percentage, so perhaps like 150%. So another important construction detail that tends to be used more in transitional and traditional window treatment solutions are valances, cornices, swags, and jabos. Now, you can get them as ornate or as tailored as you'd like. Like I love this one that's all dark and it exactly matches the drapery. That's a very elegant, simple valance up at the top of the drapery. But you can also get it super whomped up and detailed like this striped one, which has like a little Chinese hat on top. Now, the last construction detail that I'm gonna talk about today is lengths and hems. There's actually a lot of extenuating circumstances like angled ceilings and whether or not you have pets and kids that will help you make those decisions. But here's your two rules of thumb. Number one, you always hang your drapery 
as close to the ceiling as you can within, you know, three or four inches, something along those lines. Now, if you have deep crown molding, obviously you're hanging it from the bottom of the crown molding. You're not covering your crown molding. The second thing is the hem. Now, my preference for hems is that drapery grays the floor, or if you're in a condition where it's appropriate, you can allow them to puddle a little bit. You know, they look very elegant that way, but they are a bit of a maintenance issue. Then just hem them right at say, an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch above the floor or say the carpet top if you're dealing with carpets and call it a day. If they are too short, drapery tend to look like they have been shrunk. And that's the thing you want to avoid at all costs. But here's where we get to the rubber meeting the road. How do you choose something that both delivers the function that you need and reflects the style statement that you have in your house? Well, the trick is in how you choose your details. Say your style statement is somewhere in the traditional category. Well, traditional drapery, as you can see, it tends to be more detailed. It's got complex valances and top details. There's lots of hardware. It tends to be trimmed with the extra trim fabrics, or maybe there's patterns, there's detailed valances, decorative hardware, there's just a lot going on. Oh my gosh, I mean, look at this blue room. That entire room is drapery, which is incredible. Or perhaps you want something simpler, but you want an extra fullness so it looks very lush and beautiful like this one living room. Or, oh my God, this is a new hotel in New Orleans. How sexy is this? They've done drapery panels that are permanently turned back and have an underlining fabric that is an accent fabric. Now that is somebody thinking through those details. So these are good solutions if you're looking at kind of a traditional style statement option with drapery. Now, transitional would be similar to traditional, but yeah, think of it as kind of pared down a little bit, like the transitional style is, right? It's a little more detailed than maybe contemporary would be, but it's definitely more of a muted palette. You know, you'll, you're gonna see less ornate detailing. You see a lot of solids versus pattern fabrics, simpler hardware, uh, choices like simple plain top pleats or maybe no pleats, just a ripple fold, those kinds of things. I love this room that has like a big trim on the pattern and that's a lovely detail or perhaps it's just a long drop of this beautiful sheared cut velvet that's all puddled on the gorgeous wood floor, that's amazing. Or even this statement where it's got, you know, a deep red velvet, it looks like. And so that's just a super simple statement in a very transitional room. So there's lots of choices there that give you the ability to make that style statement. And then of course we've got contemporary styles, right? So think of that as super pared down details. You know, usually it's a lack of pleats altogether. The, the ripple fold track is used a lot in contemporary drapery. You know, you've got fabrics chosen that are simple, plain, you know, often in an architectural color that matches the wall. Often lighter weight fabrics or slim stacks, that kind of thing. Plain hardware or maybe even no hardware at all, just this ceiling mount. So there's lots of ways that you can still have drapery, which is a transitional, traditional window treatment, but render it in a contemporary style that works with your statement. So guys, that's drapery in sort of a nutshell. And be sure to like and comment. It really helps the channel. I love all of that. And if you haven't already signed up for the club, woo, make sure you get onto that email list at lisaholt.com because we are gonna have some serious fun down there. Watch these videos. I'll see you next week.